Hello, and welcome back to another creepy haunting of Forgotten Hollow, where we recreate real haunted houses in The Sims 4. Today, let's take a step back in time to talk about and show you the Hampton Lillibridge House in Savannah, Georgia. This house was constructed by Hampton Lillibridge in 1796 to 1799. He had the home built to resemble much of the houses from that time. Unfortunately, in 1801, Hampton Lillibridge passed away from yellow fever, leaving his wife a widow and his young daughter at the home. Mrs. Lillibridge sold the house, which then turned into a boarding house for quite a while. And that's where the home's unstable history begins. During this period, there's a story about a sailor that hung himself on the third story of the house. In 1963, an antique dealer, Jim Williams, finally bought the place. Before he had purchased the house, it was vacant for a number of years. He had it moved from Bryan Street to St. Julian, where it stands today. He actually bought the adjoining home also. Unfortunately, it never made it to its new location, as it crumbled and fell into a pit before the workers could move it. Three deaths occurred along with that. Jim placed the Lillibridge house on St. Julian Street and started to reconstruct the home, bringing it back to its former glory. When the house was moved with the efforts of Jim Williams, the supernatural activity heightened. The activity was so unnerving that several members of the crew left the project. Word traveled as well, and soon enough, local news crew's curiosity was ignited. One evening, the news team entered the empty house and were attacked by a piece of construction material that flew at them. One time, a laborer was busy restoring the home when he heard footsteps and voices on floors above them. Upon investigating, he found no one was there. When he did not return to the work on the first floor, his fellow workers went upstairs to see if he needed help. They found him face down on the floor, clutching the floor's nails with desperateness. He was terrified as he spoke of his ordeal. When he walked into the room, he felt as though he'd been thrown a bucket of iced water. He felt he was losing control of his body and mind, almost as if he was possessed. With sheer panic, he dropped to the floor while mysterious, forceful, unseen hands attempted to drag him towards an open chimney shift. This would have been certain death, for he would have plunged three stories of bricked walls. The laborer anxiously concluded that an exorcism has to be conducted on the house. With the mention of the word exorcism, a loud female scream echoed through the room. One day, Jim saw a shadowy figure, and he followed it all the way to the top story of the house. The figure then disappeared behind a door, which was tightly locked and could not be opened. Neighbors reported seeing shadowy figures through the windows of the house. Many had seen a shadow of a man in a black suit and bow tie standing at the window upstairs. Often you would hear laughter, disembodied voices, tools coming up missing, and the workmen would often find bones inside of the walls. Sounds of eerie music and laughter were heard from the house, as if some paranormal party is going on. Images of dancing figures were also seen. Sometimes screams of a woman were heard. Another occurrence may have a shocking influence over this property's occult presence. During the restoration, 
the crew, upon digging up the house's foundation, excavated a buried ancient crypt with the walls constructed from lime and oyster shells. It appeared to be a pre-colonial time, perhaps of Native American origin. After its discovery, as word has it, the crypt was merely buried back underneath the house. The precise importance of the crypt and its possible relationship with the host of hauntings at the property are speculative, but indeed should be considered significant. One of the most notorious stories of the Lilybridge house is when Jim was out of the country for a buying trip. One of the neighbors called him and said there seems to be a party happening at your house. When he called one of his friends to go investigate, the door was wide open. His friend and two other gentlemen walked in and they heard footsteps above them. They ran to the top floor and one was grabbed by his ankles and pulled towards the fireplace, which was just an open pit in the middle of the floor at this time. You can still see the scratch marks on the floor where he was trying to save himself. One of the other two men pulled him to safety. Then they ran down the stairs across the street, refusing to enter the home ever again. When Jim returned, he decided to make that his permanent residence. Jim became very good friends with the Metro Police Department, often calling for hearing people in his home. Police finally told him that if he kept calling 911 for no reason, they would have to start finding him. After one police officer came and heard footsteps upstairs, he ran to follow the sound. It led him to a locked closet door that never opened. When he pulled and tugged for several moments, they decided to walk away. Then the door started to slowly open up on its own. Jim actually had the house exercised at one point, and it did lessen the activity for about two weeks, only for it to return full first in about a month. Jim could take no more and moved from the property immediately. The house has had several paranormal investigation teams to investigate. They will often find a demonic presence and spirits roaming the building. The house is occupied at the moment, but I wouldn't say that it will stay occupied for very long. The house is often sold within a year of its new tenants moving in. When you're in Savannah and you have a chance to pass by the Lillibridge house, Look at the broken bottles along the ledge. It is said to keep the birds away. The secretly is actually a voodoo ritual being practiced to ward off evil. You can't walk past the Lillibridge house without feeling a certain bit of tension in the air. The windows look like they're always staring down at you. After more than 50 years, the house is still there. The current owner of the Hampton Lillibridge house at the Washington Square says that nothing has happened in the house since they've been living in it. They've never experienced any paranormal incidents. Paranormal experts say that this is not the first time that a haunting just ceases to happen. It's just that the ghosts inside the house simply vanish or move on to some other location. It's not actually open for tours. It's a private home. But it would be fun to, to drive by and at least get a look at this beautiful manor. Leave a comment. Let me know. What have you heard about this house? Do you live in Georgia? Can you tell me about any other hauntings that you're aware of? I just may put them into a new video. Okay, everyone. Hello. Thank you for listening to the story about the Hampton Lilybridge house. I know it was a little maybe tough to uh, follow. The stories I found were pretty short and kind of sporadic. I had to piece them together. <laughs> it probably sounded like I pieced a bunch of stories together because I did. Um, but I thought it was a quite intriguing, uh, you know, just story and a beautiful house. And I like the look of it. And I like that it's like cleaned up and not like a typical run down haunted house so 
I was happy to do this one and make it look really nice in like a nice uh, New England Victorian style. And I matched it to the pictures that were on Zillow for this house since it sold last year. Of course, it seems to sell almost every other year. It's true. I looked at it on Zillow. And um, so, yeah, there was a lot of pictures of the interior, a lot of rooms. Some of the rooms are, are related to rooms that are real. Um, I could not find an actual floor plan that worked. I did find one, but it was kind of like old and like really gen not gen it was just a really old floor plan it didn't really label the rooms it didn't really show me much so i kind of made the floor plan similar to what i could find but it wasn't exactly like it at all uh in the end <laughs> because of the shape of the house it's uh it was it was quite interesting to get everything properly placed in this build but i think i pulled it off in the end some weird shaped rooms like right there in the bathroom i think i i've I do that at first, but then I pull it in and make it flat because I did not like the the way the, hall, the hallway looked. So I think I fixed that later. Don't worry. A lot of things you'll see uh, change in the end <laughs> because I kind of started by just the first couple of rooms, at least. I um, put down like the base items I needed and then decided to come back and decorate later. So you'll see me do some decorations at the end of the build. Some of the rooms I decorate fully. I don't know. I started off doing it that way. And then I was like, you know what? I think I'm just going to decorate as I go. But then I don't know. I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> don't worry about it. I was trying a different way. I don't know if I liked it that way. So then I had to go back and redo a couple of the, well, not redo, but like add more things to the first couple rooms in the hallway. But everywhere else I pretty much did in order of just fully fleshing out each room. But yeah, this is a cool house. It actually it has kind of a similar style to the Lizzie Borden house. I mean, it's kind of similar area, right? I mean, this is Georgia. That was uh, Mississippi, the kind of Southern style. Um, but, and it's actually similar color, green. But I really like the look of it and that it was different shape-wise. Um, you'll see the third floor is kind of like a barn roof, kind of like, ankled and then curved at the top so I thought that was just a cool thing and I was curious to see how to make it work and I did I did I made it work and it was awesome so I pretty much took a lot of creative rain for decorations here as well because this house like the pictures are beautiful and like super cluttered and so many things and different pictures with like the gold frames honestly there's just not enough like decor like elegant de decor, right? There's a lot of modern, um, traditional, but like not as much like elegant, at least in the packs I have. Like I don't have a couple of the packs that might have even given me more, but like there wasn't enough paintings, I will say, <laughs> um, like gold framed paintings. Like I wanted to use so many more, but I could not because I repeated a lot of them, tried to change like the, the border on some and stuff, but they're just there's not enough so yeah I kind of improvised and kind of took some creative freedom to uh put things a little different and a little bit different style like at first I tried to copy most of the rooms I saw but then also they didn't take pictures of every room so I did have to make up a couple of the rooms or maybe like three or four of the rooms are just random whatever I felt like worked that was kind of related to another room so I don't know there's like three living rooms in this house too. I don't know why, but in the pictures there was like three different areas that had lounges. One had a TV. <laughs> I don't even know. So this house is weird layout wise, shape wise, but honestly, I, I try my best, you know, you know how it goes when we do these builds. Sometimes they work out true to the original and sometimes they are more creative freedom. And this is definitely one of those. <laughs> I try to keep with the style, but it's, it was tough. I will not lie, this was a tough one. And it was pretty big. Like, I thought it, would, it was gonna be a little bit smaller. I kind of was hoping the house would be a little bit smaller. But I ended up, of course, making it a pretty large size house. But it had to be. It had to be to get the shape right. So, it's fine. It wasn't as bad. I, it didn't take me as long as the Lizzie Borden one. I'll say that. Um, mainly because Lizzie Borden one had a basement that had a lot of, like, I think when I have to decorate and make things look grungy, it takes longer. 
because you have to like carefully place all the cracks and the stains and all that stuff and this house had none of that um so pretty much this house is just like fully renovated and a beautiful you know victorian new england style so that's just what i did i made a pretty house <laughs> weird shape i promise it is a weird shape i know i know but i i did what i could because i realized like oh shoot some of the rooms were a little smaller like the living rooms maybe like i could have made a little smaller made one bedroom bigger but there's like a toddler room there's uh like a two young adult room there's like two i think there's five bedrooms total so it's like three regular rooms one with a smaller bed i don't even I, there's a lot this house is a lot i promise you you should go download it it's on the gallery under pirate queen anna or hampton lillibridge haunted look it up it'll be great if you would download it save it and follow me on the gallery because i do post builds every week or shells or all kinds of stuff I'm trying to figure out what to do next i need to do one more haunted build this week before halloween so i need to work on it like tomorrow i started this one on like thursday so this one i got done technically faster it took me all day saturday too but i haven't been feeling great um so i haven't been like pushing myself to do a ton of content lately i've had like i don't know if allergies or what i mean i did get my flu shot like two weeks ago and the first week i was fine but this week i don't know if it's related it could be um but i've never had a flu shot since i was like young so i don't know what to expect it's like my nose and my throat are super dry but I also realized something. I was running an air purifier, like a heavy duty air purifier for a couple weeks because of there was fires here in California, you know, and uh, it was smoky like inside and my my nose and my throat were dying because of the smoke um, during that time. So my parents let me take the air purifier and put it in my room and I just left it on probably close on three weeks now. And I left it on the whole time, 24 <laughs> seven. And um, apparently you're not supposed to do that. You're only supposed to run it like, you know, for short periods or, you know, when you feel like the air is dirty, but you're not supposed to run it 24 seven because it can dry out your nose and your mouth. And I was like, huh, that's probably what I'm feeling. That and then, yeah, I don't know. I get in a little bit of bloody noses too. I think that's due to the dry nose and throat and air. The air was too dry, I guess, you know? So I did buy a, um, a not a humidifier, a diffuser which uh, you put like essential oils in. Uh, CVS had one for like 12 bucks. That was actually really cheaper than I thought I was gonna have to pay for one. I just randomly was like, I need to go get something like, so on Friday I turned off the machine and I went and got this air diffuser. And so I, I haven't, I didn't feel great yesterday. I don't feel 100% today, but I feel like a little bit more like energetic. So I was like, okay, I streamed a little bit. We played this game in silence. You should watch the VOD. I scream a lot. It's it's pretty, pretty hilarious and spooky and intense. Oh my god, the monster in that game is probably the most intense monster in uh, any spooky game that I've played this year. I don't know. Um, but it's fun. It's like a Dead by Daylight. Like, one person is the monster and uh, five to six, oh, pretty much one to six other people versus a monster. And the monster can be AI or it can be, um, like, you can be it. Like, your friends can be it. So we tried both ways. The AI monster is a little buggy and could be better, but um, it was still terrifying at first, obviously. The first couple days, games we did it with AI, and then we had our friends kill, try to kill us, and that was really terrifying as well. But it was a lot of fun. It's a $10 game on Steam. You should totally check it out. I get not I get not paid to play it or anything. I just I think it's fun. We're we'll probably play it again before Halloween or on Halloween, who knows? Um, along with Phasmophobia and that folklore hunter might have an update soon. We're just trying to get all the spooky stuff out of our system. Um, because we got some big games coming up in uh, November. Who's ready for Assassin's Creed? I I know I am. <laughs> That's like the game of the year for me, I think. I think I'm gonna get lost in that game. Really excited. I still never finished um, Odyssey or Origins. I never played Origins actually, but I played like Black Flag and some of the older ones. Uh, I just, I love Assassin's Creed. They're good games, you know? Uh, anyways, let's get back to the build. I know I rambled. I don't, where was I going with that? I don't know. But anyways, yeah, I'm feeling a little better. So I'm gonna try to stream this week. My goal I'm setting for myself is about two hours every day. 
uh, no more, well, no less, <laughs> hopefully about two hours a day, even though, you know, like I have a ton of things going on, but I'm trying to overlap, like streaming my rags to riches so I can use that for a YouTube video of it or streaming a random genetics challenge so I can do a YouTube for it. Um, if I'm not feeling worse tomorrow, it all depends how I feel technically. Um, when I wake up tomorrow after and I have to work and stuff for a stream loot. So that's going to keep me busy. Like my throat is still pretty dry. I've been drinking water like no joke, like so much. I'm like the more I'm drinking or eating something, the less like I feel the dryness. So I feel like I've been drinking way too much water lately. But I mean, I'm, I never drink enough water. So I guess it's a like I, I'm feeling like I can't drink enough water right now like I'm always wanting to I don't know it's weird <laughs> I don't think it's a cold but yeah today felt better so I'm hoping this week will be better because I want to do some more gameplay and do some stuff this not just sims on stream like we did the silence game today um but maybe some other indie games I got night of the dead I got some other random games that I would like to uh get through for you guys um, and check out at least do first looks of so I'll see if I can at least pop those on for an hour or two a couple days this week when I can but yeah every day this week my goal is to stream a little bit I know I've been slacking I've been I've been you know things have been weird this year and things are depressing and <laughs> it's just tough so this third floor was interesting. I was trying to do like an overhang like to the second floor. I don't know why. I just was like, I don't feel like decorating this section. I didn't know what to do with it. So I just deleted the floor. <laughs> like an overhang looking down to the living room, right? It's kind of nice. It's not in the original build at all. It was just like at the end of this, I was getting tired of decorating. And so I was like, if I take out the floor, that's less space I have to make look good, right? <laughs> uh, so this is like the master bedroom. I kept it a little bit more like clean and a little more modern, still a little bit country, lighter colors. I just got tired of not having enough paintings. I kept getting like blocked by like the decorations around the house, not being as Victorian or, you know, old fashioned like I wanted. So yeah, this room, I kind of did whatever I felt like at the end. <laughs> like it's in the top corner. It doesn't match the rest of the house. It looks good though. I like it. <laughs> I still like the mirror, though, in the bathroom. Oh, but yeah, anyways, it's been a week. It's been a fun week. I'm glad to hopefully have whatever is bothering me go away so I can be more productive again. Because work has a busy week for me this week, too, even though I want to stream a lot this week. I think I'm just going to be like, go, go, go and buy a bunch of energy drinks and try not to sleep in too much. I have meetings most mornings anyway, so I'll have to wake up early. But that's fine. Um, yeah. We'll be alright. We'll survive. We'll get to next week. And I think... Oh, God. What is that? Oh, hold on. I did something. Alright. I deleted that. <laughs> Almost had a weird sound. Had uh, my outro pop-up music. It's fine. No, I deleted it before you guys heard it. So we're good. So you see me here going through and adding more things because like, yeah, I was so stumped with decorations in this build because of the limited, like, I want more of those gold framed paintings. Like they have a few and I hate those like musical ones. They just don't match. <laughs> and I have so many packs. I don't have all of them yet, but like, I feel like you need every pack to even get a, a chance to match things as you would like, you know, like, it's so annoying. Oh, and anyone see the little fun glitch that is happening now? If you try to order a game pack or a stuff pack on Origin, it tells you that Journey to Batu is a requirement to download to buy this game and play it. It literally says it's required. Look it up. Pixelate and other people have covered it. Uh, I'm not doing video uh, news as much other than like big pack stuff. But um, yeah, come on, EA. That's not okay. You cannot force people to buy something and tell them it's a requirement to play my first pet stuff you must buy a journey to pet too no no that's not okay that's such shady marketing tactic and you should be ashamed for doing that and it seems it's real like i've seen multiple multiple like legit people see it um i haven't tried it myself personally because i just 
forget to, <laughs> but I've seen multiple people talk about it and show it. It's legit. Yes, it may be like, oh, you know, we just want to, you know, but why does it say required? It should not say required. It literally says required, but then in the very fine text is like not actually required. But there's like two different places where it says it's required. So like people not knowing the games or how the packs work, they're going to think they have to buy it. That's messed up. That's shady. I'm sorry. Oh, right. Well, I think we're coming up on the final, the final little bit walkthrough of the builds. Thank you guys so much. And I appreciate you. And I hope you guys like the video. Give me a like and a thumbs up if you did. And leave a comment. What do you think we should do next? I take your requests, you know, and if something is popular enough, I will... I will try to see if I can make it happen. I need one more build for this week, and then I gotta figure out if I'm gonna continue this series, if you like it. Let me know if you want me to continue it, because uh, I kind of want to outside of October, but if enough people are enjoying it as well, then I will. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, and we'll see you in another video very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>